Welcome to you all around the world. Welcome to Follow the Money Radio. So grateful to have you here along for the ride. Here we are on episode number 445. Today's episode title, Asset Protection 101. So I want to welcome you to another episode of Follow the Money. And, you know, today we're going to be diving into a vital topic that's not just about numbers. It's not just about figures. It's about safeguarding your hard-earned wealth and securing your financial future. You know, we're in the middle of our five levels of financial freedom podcast series. And you may recall that last podcast on the last podcast episode, we talked through level one. Now, by the way, if you're uh, new to our podcast, or if you're not familiar with our five levels of financial freedom, you can go to our website, followthemoney.com forward slash five levels. And there you'll find the five levels of financial freedom laid out very simply for you. These are uh, the five levels that my wife and I used to break free financially. And since that time, hundreds, if not thousands of people uh, who have come to followthemoney.com, listen to our podcast and have become members here, have used these five levels to achieve financial security. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to continue on in this topic of the five levels. And today we're moving into level two. And what we're going to be talking about is asset protection. Now, whether you're a seasoned investor or whether you're just getting started on your financial journey, this episode is packed with essential insights to ensure your assets stay well guarded against the uncertainties of life. And we're going to be really drilling down into level two on this episode. But what we're going to do is we're going to break up level two because it really is quite rich. There's a lot here in level two. So we're going to take the next three episodes, this one and then two more, to drill down deeper into level two. As I mentioned, if you missed our last podcast episode, you can go back and listen to that. It's all about level one, where we talked about laying a proper foundation for your financial plan, for your financial future. But today, as I mentioned, we're beginning the first of three episodes dedicated to level two. And we're going to go through all five uh, levels over the course of several episodes over the course of the the next uh, many weeks. Now, level two, where we're going to be talking about today, is a very important level in our five levels of financial freedom because it will begin laying the foundation for the wealth building process. You know, the road to financial freedom can be perilous and is certainly paved with many risks. You know, these risks themselves are a normal part of life. However, when a risk materializes into an actual loss, the results can be devastating to you and to your finances. Let's talk about some of these examples of risk. You could get sued. You could die prematurely. You could become disabled. You could get into an automobile accident, uh, become terminally ill, and the list goes on and on and on. Because risk is so prevalent, our society has learned effective ways of managing and mitigating that risk. In fact, today, our entire capitalistic system relies upon risk management techniques. And at the personal level, the most common form of risk management is an insurance contract. So what exactly is insurance? Well, simply put, insurance is a social device through which the losses of a few are paid by many. It can also be defined as a risk management technique that finances insurable risks. Believe it or not, our entire capitalistic system would break down without our modern day forms of insurance. Who among us would be able to financially bear 100% of all of the risks that confront us in our modern culture? Unfortunately, many people approach the concept of insurance planning strictly from a cost basis. They want the cheapest insurance they can purchase. Now, while it's wise to save money when possible, when it comes to insurance, the concept of you get what you pay for is certainly true. There are at least two things on this earth for which you should not seek the cheapest price. One is a parachute, and the other is insurance. Now, many people view insurance and protection strategies as a necessary evil, and to some extent, this is understandable. It is true that dreaming up and creating multiple streams of income and Creating cash flowing investment strategies is much more exciting than re examining your auto insurance declaration page or comparing two life insurance policies. But it is also true that if you seek to build assets and income without first implementing protective measures, you are putting the cart before the horse. You may even be building your financial game plan backwards. One of my favorite illustrations comes from Bob Castellone, an economist who has compared the financial planning process to a castle and a moat. In feudal times, families would surround their castles with a large moat, and this moat played an extremely important role in keeping intruders, robbers, and thieves from ransacking their castle. 
Now, which do you think these medieval families created first, the moat or the castle? Well, of course, they would begin by creating the moat, which would allow them to build their castle in relative safety. Then, as their castle became larger and more appealing to thieves, the builders would build the moat out even further in order to dissuade would-be crooks. If you can see the wisdom in this illustration, then let's apply it to your own financial game plan. Think of the moat as your risk management strategy and the castle as your financial assets and income streams. Whether you realize it or not, there are many risks facing your financial future. Today, the risks can far outweigh those in feudal times. Before you spend your entire life building your castle, take time to first create your moat in order to manage these risks. And you know, simply by listening to this podcast, you have made it clear that you're committed to getting and staying on the road to financial freedom, and I applaud your efforts. But now is the time to commit to building your financial game plan in the right order. While the rest of America is busy building their castles with little, if any, moat, I want you to commit to building your moat first and your castle second. And don't be surprised that as your castle becomes larger and more beautiful through your hard work and ingenuity and efforts, that you'll have to revisit the size of your current moat. It's a process that will last a lifetime. Now, there's another very important reason why level two is unique in our five levels of financial freedom, and that is because something that I often say that there are no do-overs in level two. You know, that is no mistakes are allowed. And I repeat, level two in our five levels of financial freedom is the only level in this entire system that must be completely perfect. Let me explain. You can make a mistake in any of the other five levels, and you will usually recover. For example, you could lose money on a stock or an ETF investment in level four. You could lose some money on a bad real estate deal or even fail in your, in your own business in level five. Your retirement plan could even sustain a 10, 20, or even 30% drop in value, but in the end, it's likely that you will live to tell the tale. All of these risks could materialize into losses, and yet under any of those preceding circumstances, your financial game plan would probably not be destroyed. However, let's now assume that you suddenly become permanently disabled in a freak accident. Can you call up your insurance agent and then apply for disability income insurance? No, it's too late. Let's assume that you get into a massive auto accident and it was your fault. If your limits of liability were not high enough, you could be on the hook for tens of thousands of dollars, maybe even more. And it's too late to change. It's the same with death. You cannot die and then go buy life insurance or increase your death benefit or have a will drawn up. It's simply too late. You see, for most people, the best time to buy insurance is six months before you need it. When is the best time to buy life insurance? Of course, six months before you die. When is the best time to buy long-term care insurance? You get the idea. Unfortunately, that's not how it works in the real world. Because there are risks, we need protection. And because we are all going to be in the wealth building process during these five levels of financial freedom, it's even more important to have maximum protection. So this is my point. In level two, there are no do-overs. Because you cannot afford a mistake in this level, your insurance protection must be exactly the way that you would want it to be if the worst case scenario occurred. This is why level two is one of the most important and powerful levels in the entire five levels of financial freedom. Now, again, I will readily admit that there are more interesting topics to discuss, and we're going to have those conversations as we progress through the five levels. But right now, it's all about level two, and level two is all about protection. To use a sports illustration, it's been said that a good offense will fill up a stadium, but a good defense wins championships. Think of your investments and income as your offense and your insurance protection as your defense. And if you ever needed a solid defense, it's now. All right, so we've laid a good foundation here explaining why level two is so important, but we've titled this podcast episode Asset Protection 101. So let's dive into that topic now. Let's define what an asset really is. An asset is defined as property owned by an individual that has economic value. However, assets must have a certain degree of value, whether real or perceived, in order to be considered worthy of protection. That's why we purchase insurance protection for our home, but not for a pair of sneakers. Furthermore, your decision to protect a specific asset hinges upon your ability to replace the item. 
if the asset, in this case a pair of sneakers, can be easily replaced, then protection makes no economic sense. Nevertheless, this concept of replacement value is what should be at the forefront of your mind when you're making an insurance purchase. Let's think about it this way. If your car was stolen, would you want to check for just the amount you would need to get by? Or would you want to check for the full replacement value of the car? Or if your home were to suddenly burn to the ground, would you want the insurance company to send you a check to rebuild half of your old house? Or would you want a check for the full replacement cost of the house? Or what if you became permanently disabled? Would you want your income to be drastically reduced every month to a level that would just give you enough money to barely get by? Or would you rather continue to receive a monthly check that reflected your full income before the disability? What if you were to unexpectedly die? Would you want your spouse and children to receive a check to just cover their needs and not a penny more? Or would you want them to receive a check for 100% of your human economic life value? It's obvious that most of us would prefer to receive full replacement value on our assets, income, and lives if disaster were to suddenly strike. Yet this is where most people get it wrong today on insurance. Instead of buying the kind of insurance coverage that they would really and truly want, they too often focus solely on premium costs and not upon replacement value. Why? Because most people fear being overinsured and paying too much for something that they may never use than they do in being underinsured and at risk. The truth is, is that most people are woefully underinsured or improperly insured today. So what we're going to do in this particular episode is we're going to go through, as I mentioned, asset protection. Now we're going to break up our level two into three different components. The first is asset protection. That's the purpose of this episode. In the next episode, we're going to dive into income protection. And then in the following episode, we're going to talk about life protection. So as you can imagine, in the topic of asset protection, we're going to be talking about the things that you own, like your property, your home, your automobile, your liability insurance. So we're going to be talking about these things. You know, for the average American family, basic asset protection simply refers to buying insurance coverage on their vehicles, their car, their truck, their RV, their boat, their motorcycle, and their real estate holdings, like their primary residence or a second home or a rental property. And we're going to talk about these. But let's begin with vehicle insurance. Let's talk about auto insurance. I want you to, if you have the opportunity to pull out your auto insurance policy during this podcast episode, I encourage you to do it and compare what I'm about to say to what you currently have and to make sure that you're adequately protecting yourself and your loved ones. Now, I want to begin by letting you know that I am not a PNC insurance agent. That is, I'm not an auto insurance agent or a home insurance agent. My specialty is in life insurance. So I focus strictly upon life insurance and also some long-term care and disability. But for the most part, I focus on life insurance. When it comes to vehicle insurance and when it comes to property insurance, I know uh, you know quite a bit about it, but I tell you, it is a very vast topic. And so this is something that you're going to want to sit down with your own insurance agent who handles your auto and your home insurance and really go through this with them if you have questions. It's a vast topic and there's a lot to learn. So we're just going to scratch the surface today. Now, Let's begin by looking at your auto insurance declaration page, and you're going to see a few numbers. The first set of numbers that I want you to notice is your limits of liability. Now, these numbers will look something like 50,000, 100,000, and 50,000, like 50, uh, you know, uh, slash 100, slash 50, or something like that. Let's break down what these numbers mean. These three numbers, the first two numbers, in this case, 50,000 and 100,000, are referring to bodily injury liability limits. Now, assuming this level of coverage, if you were to get into a major auto accident in which people were injured, each injured party would receive a maximum payout of the first number, or 50000 and then the second number represents the total amount that the insurance company will pay out for injuries per accident, in that case, 100000 That would be the absolute maximum to be paid in hospital fees or any other injury-related costs per accident. If several people are injured in an accident and you are at fault, then you will more than likely be sued for any injury-related damages in excess of $50,000 per person with a $100,000 cap. Now, while this may sound like a lot of money, you may be surprised how fast you can go through $50,000 in a hospital stay. Now, that last number on the declarations page, uh, which we were referring to as 50000 refers to the total amount that your insurance will pay out for property damage per accident. So property damage refers to other vehicles, buildings, or anything that was damaged in the collision. 
So this means that if your car totals another automobile that's worth more than $50,000 in an accident and you're at fault, well, then you're going to be on the hook to pay the remaining amount that the insurance company doesn't pay out. You should know that each state, by the way, sets its own minimums of what limits of liability that each licensed driver must carry at all times. And these numbers can be found on each state insurance commission's website. You know, when you look around some of the different states, and this has been a while since I've looked at these minimums, but many states have extremely low minimums. I remember when I lived in Oklahoma that the minimums at the time were 10,000, 20,000, and 10,000. So this is extremely low considering that you know, most cars cost much more than that. And certainly, you know, if you had an injury, those numbers would be very, very little. Now, you may see some of the cute car commercials on television that tell you to switch coverage to save money, but they're often able to reduce your rates by lowering your limits of liability. Now, this is something that you don't want to do. In my opinion, especially if you have any assets that could be exposed to a lawsuit, then you certainly need to have higher limits of liability. We'll talk about how you can do that without spending much more money uh, as we proceed. But let's move on to the next number. The next number to pay attention to on your declaration page is your deductible. Now, this is the amount that you'll have to pay out of pocket in the event that you file a claim with your insurance company. You can decrease your overall insurance costs simply by raising your deductible. Now, while this would not be advised for someone who has no liquid savings, for those who make it through our five levels, by the time you get to level three, you're going to have six months of liquid savings. So that would be a very good idea for you to be able to have that cushion of cash in the bank set aside for emergencies, and then you would be able to cover that deductible no problem. So you'll be able to raise your deductible, and by doing that, you'll save up some money, you'll save money on the policy where you can raise those limits of liability. Very powerful. The final number that I want you to notice on your declaration page is the amount you're paying for uninsured motorist coverage. And if you don't have currently have uninsured motorist coverage, I would urge you to run, not walk, to get this in place immediately. This is a very powerful addition to your auto insurance coverage that, in effect, allows you to hold your own insurance company liable in the event that someone without insurance coverage causes damage to you, to your automobile, or to your family. If you do not currently have this type of coverage and you have an accident with an uninsured driver, which there are many apparently today, and a growing number, especially in this economy where people are choosing between which bills to pay, and sometimes the insurance bill just doesn't get paid. So if you're in an accident with an uninsured driver and it's not your fault, well, it could be a nightmare scenario. Obviously, insurance companies are not eager to promote this coverage as it gives you, the insured, the power to sue your own insurer if necessary. Now, when it comes to auto insurance, many Americans are underinsured or simply uninsured. And the biggest road hazard you may face is an uninsured driver. A few years ago, the California Department of Insurance reported that as many as 28% of Californian drivers didn't have any car insurance. That's incredible. That's almost one out of three. Similar numbers have been found in other states as well, making uninsured motorist coverage a very wise option. You know, the Insurance Research Council has found that nearly one out of every six drivers is in uninsured across the country. And these are the five states with the most uninsured drivers, according to the latest data I could find. If you live in any one of these states, then you certainly want to have uninsured motorist coverage. Uh, New Mexico, Mississippi, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Florida. That's according to the Insurance Research Council. And so the bottom line here is that over the years, I've heard a number of heartbreaking stories from those who have not added uninsured motorist coverage to their policy and have lived to regret it. In my estimation, the benefits and peace of mind provided by this additional coverage far outweigh the price. In my opinion, you want the most comprehensive coverage that you can afford when it comes to auto insurance. So raise your deductible as high as you can comfortably afford and then use the savings to raise your limits of liability as high as you can, and then finish by adding uninsured motorist coverage to your policy. I mean, really, what's the point of building up a large amount of assets and income streams in level four and level five, only to lose them by purchasing a cheap and improperly structured auto insurance policy in level two, which left you and your assets personally exposed. Don't make the mistake of thinking that your auto insurance only covers your vehicle. It can cover you and the assets that you will spend your entire lifetime building. Hey 
friends, it's Jerry Robinson here from Follow the Money Radio. You know, we just launched a very exciting live weekly webcast called Trends and Profits that I want you to be a part of. It is part of our membership. You have to be a member here at followthemoney.com to be able to enjoy this webcast. But what we do in this webcast is we provide you every week with valuable insights, uh, trend alerts, actionable investing and trading ideas. And then you also have the opportunity to get your questions answered during our member Q&A segment. Each episode of the Trends and Profits webcast, which is every single week, is thoughtfully crafted to deliver four segments that will empower you to make smart investment decisions. We begin with a news brief, helping you stay up to date with the latest market news that could impact your investment strategies. We analyze the current events and economic data and geopolitical trends to help you navigate this ever-changing market landscape. In segment two, we move into trend alerts and help you stay ahead of the curve with our trend alerts. We share our expert analysis and market trends. We identify key opportunities and potential pitfalls, and we help you discover those emerging trends so you can unlock potential profits. And then in In segment three of our new weekly webcast, we tackle actionable investing and trading ideas. So when you're ready to take action, this is the perfect segment for you. We present actionable ideas and strategies designed to help you capitalize on market trends from stock picks to ETF trading strategies, crypto ideas. You'll receive practical guidance to help you achieve your financial goals. And then in our fourth segment, we spend time answering your questions, which matter to us greatly. We believe in the power of community and fostering a supportive learning environment. So during our member Q&A segment of our weekly live webcast, we address your specific queries. We provide insights and offer some general advice to help you overcome any hurdles you may face in your investing or trading journey. So our brand new Trends and Profits webcast for members only, I encourage you to check it out. You've got to be a member here. Of course, you got to go to followthemoney.com forward slash join. Become a member today. Start your seven day free trial. Check it out. If you want to be a better investor, a better trader, you want good ideas delivered to you in your inbox every single day, follow the money. That's where you want to go. Followthemoney.com forward slash join. We're here for you. We want to help you in 2023. I'll see you on the other side. All right, let's continue on now as we talk about Asset Protection 101. We just covered auto insurance. Let's talk about home insurance. For most people, the single largest investment they will ever make is into their primary residence. And obviously, the replacement factor is what makes property insurance so vital. Proper home insurance protects you and your home from loss or damage caused by theft, wicked weather, fire, and other natural disasters. Now, if your home were to burn down tomorrow, Would you want it built back for 50% of its current size? Would you want to check for 50% of its value? If not, then why would you entertain the idea even for a minute of having an insurance policy with anything less than full replacement benefits? When you think about the insurance, don't focus exclusively on cost, but instead upon replacement. When it comes to property insurance, I believe the best strategy is to purchase full replacement value. Now, you can keep your costs down by raising your deductible as high as you comfortably can afford. And again, with a cushion of liquid savings, a high deductible should not be a problem. Now, while your home insurance policy will protect against damage and loss, it may not protect as much as you think. And this is why it's vital for you to really spend some time looking at your policy and understanding what's covered and what's not covered. You know, some policies do not automatically cover your home's contents, such as your jewelry from theft, for example. In order for the contents of your home to be properly covered, you may need to purchase a rider now, these riders are known as endorsements in the uh, property and casualty insurance world, and they provide you with extra coverage on your valuables, such as your jewelry or fine art or antiques or things like that, even business equipment. Riders are inexpensive to add to your policy, but they must usually be requested. Also, I highly recommend that you take a video of the contents of your home, especially those items that are particularly valuable. And in the event of loss, this recorded video will help you establish what contents need to be replaced when working with the insurance company. Again, I can't stress to you enough that different policies will cover different things, and this is a very complex topic. So I want to stress to you that you want to do your due diligence and spend some time with your your PNC agent, your your home insurance uh, agent, 
and ask those questions that will allow you to get more coverage by raising that deductible. Maybe you can lower your cost a little bit or maybe just get better coverage overall by raising that deductible and then raising those limits of, uh, you know, of coverage. Now, lastly, we want to talk about the third component here of asset protection, and that's liability insurance. One of the most important types of insurance that you can carry is a personal liability policy. Now, this type of insurance coverage is often known or called an umbrella policy because it begins paying out after your home or auto insurance limits of liability have been exceeded. So typically, you can purchase a $1 million umbrella policy for usually less than $500 per year. Now, while a $1 million liability policy is usually enough for most people, those with more sizable assets may want to apply for more coverage. These types of policies can be purchased for up to $10 million or even more. Now, there's no hard and fast rules regarding the amount of liability insurance that one should have as everyone's situation is different. But let me give you a few situations in which an umbrella policy would come in handy. So let's just assume that someone slips on your sidewalk while on your property and then decides to sue you. Or maybe you're while entertaining guests at your home, someone drowns in your swimming pool. Or maybe you're at fault in a car accident that permanently disables or kills someone. Or maybe you're sued for slander or libel. Imagine working and saving and investing or building a business for your entire life just to have everything stripped away due to a lawsuit. Friends, it happens every single day right here in America. A good attorney friend of mine once told me, he said, Jerry, waving a good umbrella policy in front of a lawyer is like waving a juicy steak in front of a hungry dog. When you maintain an umbrella policy, you stave off the lawyers from your personal assets. In other words, a good umbrella policy not only protects you from liability, simply having it can give you more leverage in the event that you do face a lawsuit. With lawsuits on the rise, an umbrella policy is an important part of any financial game plan. However, in today's increasingly litigious society, homeowners are particularly susceptible, and so they should especially consider owning one of these policies immediately. And while umbrella policies are excellent tools, you should know that they do not uncover intentional damage caused by you or your family to any of your assets. Additionally, an umbrella policy will not cover damages related to your business or your professional life. For specific business protection, you can purchase something known as a professional liability policy. So these are the three areas that we focus on when we talk about asset protection. We talk about your auto insurance, which we've already talked about. We talk about your home insurance. And then, of course, we talk about your liability insurance. These are very important areas that many people don't often connect to their overall financial plan, realizing how they serve as that moat to protect the castle of assets that you're working hard to build. So I want to stress to you, take time to go through this podcast episode again if you missed any of the concepts that we covered, because there's a lot of information here. And be sure to go to our website, followthemoney.com forward slash five levels and drill down into level two. Take your time and really spend time thinking about this and then have a good conversation with your auto insurance agent or your home insurance agent, and then really consider adding on that umbrella policy if you don't already have one. This can be a real lifesaver in the event that you need it. Welcome back to the final moments of today's broadcast. I sure hope this has been eye-opening and helpful for you. I know this is a bit untraditional for some of the topics that we talk about. We certainly talk about this uh, many times throughout you know, the year when we talk about our five levels. However, this topic of asset protection, specifically auto, home, and, li- and uh, uh, liability insurance, is extremely powerful. I don't want you to dismiss it as something that's that's not vital for your own financial plan. In the end, the most important lesson to remember about level two is that there are no do-overs. So take your time in level two. Make sure every piece of protection that you require is in effect. Make sure that your auto insurance is properly structured. Make sure that your property insurance is exactly the way that you want it. And raise those deductibles and use the savings that you've put away to increase your coverage so that you have much better coverage in the event that you need it. And as we wrap up this empowering episode, 
I want you to remember that insurance planning is more than just a necessity. It's a proactive step towards securing your financial legacy. The choices that you make today can ripple into a future of stability, resilience, and peace of mind. Your wealth deserves protection. And through a well-crafted insurance strategy on your auto, your home, and your liability protection, you're building a fortress around your assets. Again, I want to encourage you to go to our website, followthemoney.com forward slash five levels and spend some time looking through level two. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us. You can always contact us right here through our website, followthemoney.com forward slash contact. And if you'd like to speak directly with me, if you have a question about your insurance planning, feel free to reach out to us again, followthemoney.com forward slash contact and just request a free meeting with me. I'd love to meet with you. I'd love to talk with you and answer any questions you might have. And as always, I'd like to leave you with a final word, this time by the author Jack Canfield, when he said, I believe that people make their own luck by great preparation and good strategy. You know, these powerful words remind us that our financial destiny lies in our hands. As we conclude this episode on asset protection, remember that safeguarding your hard-earned wealth isn't just about chance. It's about taking deliberate actions to fortify your future. Armed with the insights that we've explored today, you have the tools to craft a robust insurance strategy that shields your assets from life's uncertainties. Don't wait for the storm to strike. Take action now to ensure your financial castle stands strong against adversity. So my friends, let's heed the call to action. Let's assess our auto, home, and personal liability insurance plans, and let's craft them not just as policies, but as pillars of protection. Your journey towards financial security begins with a choice to safeguard what you've built and to pave the way for what's to come. And that's just something to think about. Thank you so much for joining us on this enlightening episode. And until next time, may your strategies be sound, your preparation thorough, and your future bright. This is Jerry Robinson signing off, and I urge you to take charge of your financial future. Stay empowered, stay protected, and stay tuned for more invaluable insights on Follow the Money Radio. And always remember, when you want the truth, just follow the money. Have a safe and prosperous week, and we'll see you right here next time. Until then, God bless. podcast is strictly for informational and educational purposes. It should not be construed as specific investment advice. The views and opinions of our guests and sponsors, including Tom Cloud, are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of FTMDaily.com or Robinson Media Group, LLC. Jerry Robinson does hold an insurance license and at times may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products. Follow-up, individualized responses to email or phone requests that involve the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation will not be made absent compliance with state investment advisor registration requirements or an applicable exemption or exclusion and applicable insurance regulations. Past performance is not indicative of future results. You should be aware of the real risk of loss in following any strategy or investment discussion on the podcast. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.